my first starting point there would be, what does it mean to the investor? Like, is this just, if you're investable from a venture capital, then you're investable from investable from the, the OZB or, you know, kind of fund mm -hmm. or can a, you know, bakery get an investment and because they might grow or have cash flow or even just the basis alone, like kind of, can it, either of you sort of piece together either the math side or kind of the, the scaffolding of why a business and what types of business might even start looking and how they can start to formulate their, their pitch? Yeah. So from the real estate perspective, um, I would say that what, what it comes down, like the, the first place to start <clears throat> is just to have a good broker um, who can run the numbers for you and uh, tell you, tell you, you know, is this a good deal or is it a bad deal? Um, the broker is going to have uh, their ears to the ground and they'll have a pulse on what the market is like. Um, so they can, they can probably opine as to the value of a deal, opportunity zone stuff put aside for us for the moment. They'll probably have the, they'll probably have a, a, a pretty good idea of whether something's worth investing in, investing the time and money. And again, go back to the, um, the kind of the, <laughs> the, the Turner phrase, uh, opportunities and, you know, legislation will not make a bad deal good, but it'll make a good deal great. So you want to find those good deals first. Uh, and you want somebody like a, like a broker to be the first person of contact uh, to, to start talking to you about that. That, that. That's what I would do, to be honest. All right, I guess from the uh, Opportunity Zone business side, I guess, you know, this could be an attractive, uh, you know, way to raise capital for businesses that have historically been locked out or had limited access to capital. Um, due to the additional incentive for a prospective investor, particularly for an investor that has really um, has a very low basis, but a high capital gain appreciation over the years. Let's say somebody who's bought stock that is appreciated tenfold, 10 down, you know, and is looking to def continue to defer that. Um, and it's, that, that's a natural partnership there um, um, because they definitely want it. They have substantial capital that they can deploy into a QOF um, and uh, they're able to uh, 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 assist businesses that otherwise, uh, you know, whether it be uh, minority groups, businesses run by, uh, or, or by women um, that, have, as you know, Nick, have been under, underrepresented from a VC standpoint and to, to traditionally lack um, uh, 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 access to those kind of markets. Um, I think that, um, you know, particularly if you're working with groups that are focusing on those types of uh, um, uh, entities, whether it be like SOAR with NCID that focus on women entrepreneurs, or if you're working with, you know, you know companies that are working with like uh, backstage capital that's looking to help uh, pe uh, uh, founders of color grow their business and things of that sort, if that could be tied in what, you know, in conjunction with what you see with traditional structures targeting those markets. I think there's a, a win-win solution there. 